When truth was lost and hearts were frozen from you, Allah came a prophet chosen, blessed prophet Muhammad, obedient to you, taught us the things we ought to do. He taught us for certain that you are one and that you have neither a daughter nor son. He taught us to be good to our mother and father and that paradise lies under the feet of our mother. I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise and follow your sunnah, prophetic ways. I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise and follow your sunnah, prophetic ways. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you and welcome to Back to the Prophet, where we take our problems and questions and we look at the life example of the Prophet Muhammad for guidance to help us better understand our religion and how we can apply it today. The month of Ramadan is one of the most important occasions in the Islamic calendar. Every Ramadan, for the entire month, Muslims fast going without food and drink and intimacy from dawn until a sunset. They do that in thanks to Allah for revealing the Holy Quran in that month. And also, the great victory of Fat Makkah as well as the Battle of Badr, which took place in that sacred month. Fatah Makkah, the conquest and opening of Makkah, took place peacefully without bloodshed. The Prophet promised anybody who did not try to fight would be spared. And he ordered especially all of his men to be careful to spare human life. And he was very angry when he found out that Khalid ibn Walid got into a dispute with an armed group of men and actually there was a skirmish and a minor bloodshed took place at that time. And he was very angry because he did not want that to take place. But all in all, it went very, very smoothly. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, entered into Mecca and first went to the Kaaba that was built originally by Abraham, peace be upon him, and dedicated to the worship of God alone. That the Prophet helped to rebuild. And the Prophet himself with his own hands, had placed the black stone, the original cornerstone of Abraham, in its place in the wall. He went into the Kaaba. First he went around the Kaaba, breaking all the idols. Then he entered inside this sacred place and found it full of idols. Two of them were Abraham and Ismail casting lots, telling their fortunes. And he was very angry. He said, I swear by God, they never did such a thing. They never tried to define the future with casting lots. And he destroyed all of those, as is narrated in an authentic hadith in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. Then he went outside after praying within the holy uh, Kaaba. He went outside and all of Quraysh are gathered in front of him. All of his enemies who had tried to murder him murdered his uncle, many of his very careful, his beautiful companions. There were his loyal Muslim army of 10,000 with their swords drawn, ready at his signal to cast their swords down upon the necks of these evil and wicked pagans, these murderers and thieves. And he walked out of the Kaaba and he said to them, Quraysh, what do you think I'm going to do with you? And they said, you are our noble brother. Suddenly he's their noble brother after having insulted him and calling him a liar, an insane person, and a magician or sorcerer. You are the son of a noble brother. And so the prophet said to them, have no fear today. Go, you are free. Antum at At this point, they couldn't believe their luck that the Prophet had spared them. Probably most of us at this point 
could not resist getting vengeance upon our enemies. But the prophet, at his moment of triumph, was forgiving and merciful and forgave them. Nobody except a convicted criminal were punished on that day. Bilal, the former slave who had been tortured at the beginning of Islam, now stood on top of the Kaaba, on the roof of God's house, and made the beautiful Islamic call to prayer, which had not been heard before in Mecca. And the people of Mecca, one after another, started embracing Islam. And the Prophet would take the hand of each man. He didn't shake the hands of the women, but he would shake the hand of each man and they would enter into Islam as is narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. Yet others persisted in their old religion and they were allowed to go free. Nobody was forced into Islam. Overnight, suddenly, the ranks of Islam were full of people. Now suddenly, 2,000 more men had joined in the ranks overnight. And they were very proud and they were very anxious. Now some of the other Arab tribes, Thaqif, and Hawazin had now declared war against the Muslims and they were marching toward Mecca. But they were all anxious to go out and quickly defeat this new danger and win a great victory. And many of these new converts had very little knowledge of Islam. They hadn't known the Prophet himself personally very often. They hadn't understood the deep teachings of Islam. They were really anxious to capture booty. And so Hawazin and Thaqif were very foolish. And they had brought with them huge amounts of, of wealth. But what they did when they entered into this valley was post their archers on every pass, on every side behind the rocks, all on the edges of the mountain. And so when the Muslims came in, they were boldly charging in as fast as they could go. And quickly, arrows started raining down upon them from every direction. Quickly, some of the old people who had only overnight become Muslims, like Abu Sufyan, they were like, oh wow, mm, I'm happy now to be seeing the Muslims suddenly getting what's coming to them. And they were secretly in their hearts perhaps a little bit pleased. But the Prophet ﷺ, when his men started retreating, started calling out to them, where to? Where are you going? Come to me. Where are you going? I am the messenger of Allah. I am Muhammad, son of Abdullah. Uh, he kept doing that, but nobody responded. Uh, he was surrounded by some of the Muhajireen, just a few of them. And a few of the members of his household and his family stood carefully planning, not panicking, but planning what to do next. So the Prophet ordered Al-Abbas, his uncle, to call out, O Ansar, O people of Medina, the helpers of Medina, you took the pledge at Hudaybiyah, under the tree at Hudaybiyah, which Allah was all pleased with you. And so slowly the Ansar started coming back, little after little, as they heard the voice of Al-Abbas, and they heard where the Prophet is. In the confusion of fighting, they couldn't see, but they could follow that voice. And they went through fighting their way back to where the Prophet was. Peace and blessing be upon him. So more and more started fighting their way back to the Prophet ﷺ. Soon there were a hundred men around him. And they began to really fight back in a hard way. And now the battle was really raging as the Prophet said ﷺ. And he, the Prophet took up some small pebbles and he threw them in the face of the enemy and within a short time they started panicking and retreating and returning in flight. And so this is all mentioned in chapter 9, Surah Tawbah. And so in verse 25, Allah said, Indeed, Allah gave you help and success on many battlefields and in the occasion of Hunain when you were full of pride and arrogance because of your great numbers. But the great numbers proved of no avail whatsoever for you. For the earth, despite all of its vastness, became too narrow and constricted for you, and you turned back re retreating. In the next verse, But Allah, once again, bestowed from on high 
the sakina, an inner peace upon the true believers. And they were able to have a great victory. They were supported by forces of angels who were invisible, invisible to you. The Hawazin and Thaqif were very foolish for bringing huge amounts of supplies with them to that battle. Their idea had been that we will bring everything we own so that we will not retreat and we'll fight to the death. But instead they retreated and they left behind 24,000 camels. That is millions and millions of dollars. 40,000 sheep and 4,000 of their uqiyas of silver, valuable, valuable treasure, and they captured 6,000 men. The Prophet ﷺ, peace be upon him, did not want to retreat, did not want to distribute this booty. He wanted to take it back and distribute it calmly later. But all these people, these new Muslims and these hypocrites who had only yesterday become Muslims, and had abandoned the battlefield, now suddenly they were demanding their share of booty. And they were claiming, why does the Prophet not give to us? And so crowds of people who only wanted money started coming to the Prophet ﷺ. And so he started to give everybody what they wanted, distributing every single thing that came. And so pretty soon they had him backed against a tree so he could hardly move. He only took the khumas the one-fifth, which was the share for the government to distribute back to the people. And he never took anything for himself. All this is narrated in the most authentic collection of the Hadith Sahih al-Bukhari. Many of those people had been retreating just moments before, and now they were all wanting uh, their own share. The Prophet was wearing a very rough cloak, and so people were grabbing him, pulling at him, begging for their share until that was pulling against his skin and putting permanent like, you know, marks on his shoulder. Uh, and he ordered everybody to get their portion. Uh, Safwan ibn Umayyah uh, reported, The Prophet didn't stop giving out the wealth until everything was gone. The people who yesterday hated him now loved him more than anybody else on the earth. People criticized that, but the prophet, prophet was very wise. He made them his friends, and they loved him, and they were ready to do anything and sacrifice for him. And so many hearts were won over. And so in Islam, for example, the zakat, which is given to the poor and needy, it can also be given to new Muslims who may be wealthy, but they've embraced Islam to help win their loyalty, and even to the leaders of the non-Muslims and influential persons who may be able to harm the Muslim community, the money from zakat can be given to those non-Muslims to uh, win their loyalty and protection so they will not attack the Muslims. We will go back, we'll go for a break, and we'll be back shortly. Assalamu alaikum. I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise, and follow your sunnah, prophet Reviewing the second rule of al mim as sakina That is the letter Meem. So if the first Meem is non-vowel or sakina, followed by a voweled Meem. So I will merge the first in the letter and I will pronounce them as one. وَآمَنَهُمْ مِّنْ And we spoke abundantly on the virtues of seek a refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan. Especially for the first reciter, he's got to recite it out loud. والسماء ذات البروج أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فإذا جاءت الصاخة وإذا النفوس زوجت Make sure it's ضمة وإذا النو وإذا النفوس Thank you for joining us. I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise, and follow your sunnah, prophetic way. 
Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to our program. We're talking about the Battle of Hunain, which was almost a disaster because the Muslims were so successful and they were very boastful. And so it taught us a lesson to be humble and not to be fooled by numbers and wealth and technology. But what really counts is what's in the heart of people. And people who are mentally strong, spiritually strong, uh, educated and confident, they can do a lot uh, when people who are foolish and emotional will go uh, and be destroyed by their foolishness and their ignorance. The Prophet gave away everything of this vast wealth overnight to those new Muslims who had only recently embraced Islam because he wanted to win over their hearts and kill off that bitterness and hatred of years of conflict and replace it with love and affection. But the poor Ansar, the poor people of Medina, had nothing. It was all gone and there was nothing left. And so people started to criticize. You're giving it to your relatives and not giving it to us. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, I gave to those people because I feared that they are impatient and full of fear, but I left others because they have goodness and richness of Allah that is in their hearts. They don't need the money and wealth of this world. And so one of the uh, Ansar, as in recorded in Sahih Bukhari, Amr bin Taghlib said, I would not exchange those words of the Prophet for all the wealth in the world. That is, that I'm leaving you with the pleasure and richness and goodness of Allah. You don't need the money, this insignificant money of this world. So the Ansar didn't receive anything, but as the Prophet said to them, I came to you when I had nothing, and you gave me everything, you stood by me, you were strong, you protected me and my people, and you will have my favor. And people said to him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, now that you have a victory, are you going to stay here among your people in Mecca? And he said, No, I'm going to return back to my people. You are my people. Your home is my home. I will live and die in al Medina, And that is what the Prophet did. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the time he was finished talking to these Ansar, his beloved companions from Medina, they were all crying. Their beards were wet with their tears. The Prophet prayed for them and for their children, and the children of the children of the Ansar. Uh, and they said, We are pleased with Allah. Radaytu billahi rabban. I am pleased with Allah as my Lord. And be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasulan. With the Prophet, uh, peace and blessing be upon him, as our Prophet and Messenger. Finally, Hawazin, who had come yesterday to attack they all embraced Islam. Somebody told them, if you become Muslims, the Prophet will give you back all that money you lost. They lost millions. But by the time they came back saying, we've embraced Islam, now give us back our money. The Prophet said, I already gave everything back. I have nothing more to give you. But what do you like? 6,000 of your children and women have been captive. Would you like them back or would you like your money back? So the, of course they all said, we would like our women and children back. And so the Prophet وسلم, in Sahih Bukhari tells them, everybody, if you can find it in your hearts to forgive, give those captives back. And so they went and gave them back. And some of them waited. If you have not gotten your share, wait till the future. There will be many more spoils in the future and you'll get a share later and you'll take that as your substitute. So you will have lost nothing. Even Thaqif, they went and hid in their fortress in Taif, up high above Mecca. The Muslims went to besiege that city, uh, but they gave up. The Prophet thought better. We'll lift the siege and we'll go back home. And with a short time, without being attacked and without being uh, threatened, they also embraced Islam only a few months later. And so by peace, by establishing security and justice, winning over hearts with a beautiful conduct and generosity, 
and forgiveness for your enemies, Allah can bestow upon you great success that you cannot imagine. It is only very narrow-minded people who have a very narrow conception of victory. But the Prophet's conception was as big as his wide and generous heart, as wide as the horizons, the blessing of our minds and reason and faith in our hearts should allow us as Muslims to find creative solutions for the good of the Muslim community all around the world. Uh, it's coming a time when perhaps a majority of Muslims today or very shortly live as minorities all over the world and we have to think about their safety and security as well as our, sa our brothers and sisters all over the world and look for peaceful solutions to our problems, inshallah. And I believe that by using the example of the teaching of the Prophet and following his beautiful akhlaq, his beautiful morality, his forgiveness and generosity, we can also win, win many bloodless and peaceful victories on behalf of our community. And so both those enemies who had surrounded the Muslims only a short time before had now entered into Islam peacefully. But there was a new dark cloud on the horizon and that is in the north the Christians uh, who had converted to Islam as well as those Christian who had allied themselves with the Islamic community were now being forced by the Romans to return to Christianity by force at the threat of death. The Romans started showing their strength and mobilizing their, fortress, their, their forces on the northern fr frontier. This happened that next summer when it was very hot and there was drought and famine. And so this the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered all the able-bodied Muslim men of Medina to assemble and to march forward to the borders of Syria in what is called today Tabuk, which in modern times is on the border of Saudi Arabia near the border of Jordan. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this in many verses of chapter 9, Surah At-Tawbah. And so in verse 38, Allah commands them, all who have attained faith, to not miss this, this opportunity. But when Allah and the Prophet call upon you to go forth, to go forth and not to cling to the earth and to your comfort, even though it's hot weather, and even though you have beautiful door orchards of dates and you can sit in the shade, drinking cool water from the springs and enjoying shade and comfort with your families. But Allah wants you to go out and defend your Muslim brothers and sisters and protect the rights of Muslims, Christians, Jews, and other people from this bloody empire of the Romans or the so-called Byzantines, the Eastern Roman Empire. At that time, they controlled almost the entire Roman Empire. The Western Roman empire around Italy was very, very weak at that time. They were really the rulers of that part of the world. And so Allah Almighty commanded all the Muslims to go forth. But the hypocrites were afraid of death. They started finding every excuse possible. One of them said, Oh, don't put me to the test. I'm afraid I will not be able to restrain myself if I see those beautiful Roman women up there, those women from Rome in Syria. And so Allah said in verse 49 of Surah Toba, and among them is one or many uh, among them who said, grant me permission to stay at home and do not put me to the test, the fitna. But truly, by making such a request, they had already fallen into fitna. That is, when we have a chance to go and do something good in the world, to, for example, convey the message of Islam to the lands of Europe or the West or the East, don't use things as an excuse like, oh, 
the beautiful women will lead me in temptation. It is when you give up the dawa, you give up the ability to do good in the world and to make a change and to spread uh, Allah's mission of peace to the world as a representative of the Prophet Muhammad today on the earth that you are really falling into a fitna. We shouldn't look for excuses. But Allah has opened many fields of us for da'wah and for conveying the message of Islam in the world. So many hypocrites failed to go home while the Muslims left in the hot summer. And in fact, there was even without those people 30,000 Muslims in that army. See how the Prophet at one time couldn't get 300 or 600 or 1,000 men together now he has an army of 30,000 marching willingly out of strong faith and commitment to meet the greatest empire of the, of the world, the Roman Empire, face to face. At Tabuk, the Romans were a no-show. They had already demonstrated their power and they didn't care to show up at this time. They wanted to choose their own time and their own place for battle. And so the Muslims got there and camped out at Tabuk, the borders between Arabia and what is now uh, Jordan. And there was no bloodshed and there was no Roman Empire to attack them at that time. The Prophet took this opportunity to make peace treaties with the different Christian tribes in the area. And the pro-Roman tribes who wanted to fight became concerned that the, that the Roman Empire did not show up to defend them. And so they started being concerned that the Romans aren't going to show up and defend us. Maybe we better make peace with Muhammad as well. And so there was a great victory once again without any bloodshed at all. May Allah Almighty continue to protect and bless the entire Muslim community and return us once again to peace and security around the world. May Allah Almighty bless you and guide all of us to the true understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When truth was lost and hearts were frozen from you, Allah came a prophet chosen. Blessed Prophet Muhammad, obedient to you, taught us the things we ought to do. He taught us for certain that you are one, and that you have neither a daughter nor son. He taught us to be good to our mother and father, and that paradise lies under the feet of our mother. I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise, and follow your sunnah, prophetic ways. I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise, and follow your sunnah, prophetic ways.